Hello, everybody. Welcome to the fifth edition of Talk Death, Who Owns Your Body? Funeral Law and Rights, the American edition this time. And today we are with Tanya Marsh and Lee Webster. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Lee. Um, Lee, maybe this one's more for you. Um, essentially, I think as we, we started talking earlier, there's been a ton of movement on green burial right now, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and with that comes a lot of new alternative products that are coming out. So at uh, Daniel R's or Daniela Zetas, I'm not sure, on Instagram, um, is asking, is it legal to use burial alternatives such as Capsula Mundi's tree pods? Well, uh, as we mentioned earlier too, they're 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 not real yet. Um, yes. they're, they're not in production. Uh, there are some real drawbacks to this and some other products that, that we could certainly get into. Um, it, it's, it's not a question of legality uh, so much about these products. It's whether they work or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just encourage people. I'm, I'm glad because these, these things are all coming out and they're, they're making people think. But, but the other issue is um, you know the the practical piece of this, uh, as we were talking about with the capsule mundi. First of all, the the edges, the, the outside shell, is uh, made of of what they're calling a biodegradable plastic. Not really sure how to go with that. Uh, the person who is being um, buried needs to be in a fetal position. Uh, that's not always an easy thing to do. Uh, it's very difficult to carry. A person in a flat casket, no less in a big egg shell, mm -hmm. and uh, there is there we have no way of burying someone in this. So there's a lot of things to be worked out in in this piece. We're looking at things like bio urns, where we're taking cremains and then we're 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 selling it in a in the, you know a large coffee cup with a seed on top. This brings up all kinds of issues for for environmentalists. Uh, you know, first of all, what's the seed? Is it indigenous? Is it you know is it going to be invasive? But the main issue with that is that cremains, uh, cremated remains are, consist of calcium, phosphate, and sodium. Nothing grows in sodium. <laughs> so all these products that you see look lovely, they're well-meaning, but they don't work. So you know, we're trying to just, you know, separate the wheat from the chaff on a lot of these products. Most of them are really simply unnecessary. Uh, they're beautiful. So what we're taking from, from what people want and is is they want beauty, they want simplicity, they want something that's authentic to the life of the person that we're honoring. You know, it, it feels to me as though uh, the the need to have uh, you know, uh, gosh, um, cremation tattoos and then having that you know peeled off and you know, please not a lampshade, um, <laughs> pretty much says to me that people are looking for this knee jerk swing. In in products and and uh, uh, you know rituals and you know the new tradition, uh, they they they're they're fed up with the way things have been done. They're making their message really clear. They're doing it by by exploring things that really aren't realistic or cost effective, or uh, you know. But it's imaginative. It means that we're in a whole new place about this, and that's what's really exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean. Maybe in terms of the legality specifically of this question, I know, for example, in Canada, or maybe it's just in a certain province, I can't remember exactly, but you cannot be buried in a cemetery unless you're within an actual um, coffin. So there's, and, and this also takes to another side of this where people, most people don't even know this, but cemeteries themselves, private cemeteries or even uh, municipal cemeteries, they can actually create their own le legislation. So if one cemetery um, you know, allows green, green burial and just a shroud, another one will say, no, you need to have like not even a pine box, like a full um, coffin or you know, thick, heavy-duty steel type casket. So let's say you know, in, in, in the world where, let's say, Capsule Mundi, um, once it is out and there are cemeteries, like h how would I know if I can use it or not? In this case, like, am I allowed to be buried in a pod? Because pods, you know, it's new, right? There's no law around this yet. Well, from from a legal perspective, green burial is burial, right? So what I mean by that is, state laws don't require the use of vaults. Okay. Um, the, the vast majority of states don't require the use of caskets. You can be buried in a shroud. 
that's green burial, right? No vault, no casket. So why is everybody, or not everybody, but so many people buried in a vault and a casket? Because as you said, Mandy, the, the cemetery rules require it. And the, the law is incredibly permissive in terms of allowing cemeteries to set their own um, rules. Now, if you have sort of like a normal functioning market um, it, among cemeteries, then one would think that some cemeteries are going to have really lax standards and others are going to have, um, you know, tight standards and you can have a choice. Uh, but in reality, in most urban markets, you don't have much of a choice um, because you have a couple of very large companies that control um, a lion's share of the market and they make rules. Um, that protect their ability to sell you things like caskets and vaults, right? So that's why so much green burial, there's, there's definitely established cemeteries that have green burial sections mm -hmm. um, to them in various places, uh, but that's why you see so much, I think, activity in the green burial area in these brand new cemeteries because these are people who are not currently participating in this sort of industry or market and are coming in and saying, I'm going to create a whole different set of rules um, that's not supporting sort of the funeral industry, but is just supporting green burial. But from a legal perspective, we don't need any of that stuff as yeah, a general I, rule. Yeah, I'd like to add to that. Um, certainly, a New England point of view here. Uh, you know, we have mandatory uh, municipal cemeteries in each each town here, um, and what we do every March in good old town meetings is that, that we uh, we we vote in our cemetery trustees and as soon as we've got somebody else to do that job we walk away from it and we don't pay any attention and what we need are people with vision and uh, you know and some a little bit of courage to start taking on these positions you know I mean Bernie Sanders will tell you my, my New England guy will tell you that uh, we all need to be participating in government at different levels and if it means the cemetery trustee job where you meet once a month and you figure out you know how to manage the funds and and all that and you get to strike down the bylaw that says you were requiring a vault we could turn all these cemeteries into green cemeteries hmm. at least portions of it in these particularly the hybrids the conventionals that have the land set aside here's why it's important because people want their loved ones to be buried near them mm -hmm. because we have this incredible need as humans for a sense of place mm -hmm. and we don't get that when we say oh this is wonderful there's a green burial cemetery 600 miles away let's you know fire up the station wagon and you know take a trip it doesn't meet any of our needs at all and so what we need is more space small space even closer to us so that we, you know, so we can keep that connection going, and we can do it ourselves. You know, the local government. What could be more accessible? We can do it. And with that in mind, um, so for th for say alternatives that are effective or alternatives that are being embraced by consumers, are you noticing any shifts in uh, in cemetery regulations? And do you see cemeteries adapting to these new consumer requests? I certainly am. Tanya, do you have something to say about that? I mean, just just the fact that some cemeteries have created green burial sort of segments, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's about the only change I've seen. Yeah, one of the most interesting things that I'm seeing, because I'm tr tracking this as much as I can, uh, both uh, within the Green Burial Council certification system and, and outside of it, uh, and I just wrote a paper about this for them, <clears throat> called uh, To Lie in Green Pastures, How the Catholic Church is Leading the Way uh, in Green Burial. So back again to the spiritual piece, um, you know, these cemeteries, are, these guys are saying, well, of course, you know, we never wanted to do cremation. Cremation in the Catholic Church means that you've removed all of the, the, the bodies that are going to be uh, intact for the, for the rapture. So we've got to keep them all together and intact. That's why we have full burial right from full body burial so they're thrilled the Catholic Church is just thrilled to have green burial back it's just gonna make it easier and here's the alternative uh, for people who were choosing cremation because they thought it was uh, more environmental um, and, and all that kind of thing so I, I'm seeing a huge uptick in Catholic conventional Catholic cemeteries where they're creating space the, um, you know the only problem with that Lee is that in so many of the archdioceses they have signed 50-year-plus uh, ground leases with Stewart or SCI or another one of the large 
a cemetery company, so they don't really control the Catholic Church in Philadelphia and Newark and Los Angeles. They don't control their cemeteries, and they won't for a half of a century. Yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. But they got they got some money up front, which they desperately need. So 